Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I know it's been it's been within the week since I made a video and uh, it's not time for my weekly video and I know I, I'm, I'm making videos a little irregularly then not making them all on Wednesdays anymore but I felt this was so important that it had to get out there. Okay um, there's been another murder. There's been another murder, this time in uh, North Carolina. And uh, it was five-year-old Cannon Hinant is the victim. Cannon Hinant. Uh, five-year-old was riding his bike. He was in his father's yard was shot point blank in the head with a gun by uh, Darian, I think his name is Sesums, Darian Sesums. And um, he knew, he knew the boy's father, he knew the boy's father. They had dinner together just the, just the Saturday before this happened. A uh, little boy just happened to be, they were friendly, they had sat on the porch and talked before. Little boy had been riding through Darian's yard, and apparently he didn't like that, so he went and shot him. Now, guess what? Darian Sussums is not going to have a yard for little boys to ride through. He's never going to have a yard again. He's going to be in prison for murder for the rest of his life. So why did he do it? Why did he do it? Well, it just so happens, it just so happens that uh, little Cannon Hinant was a white boy and Darian Sesums was black. Now, um, I don't know if it was racially motivated. I don't know. Um, he may try to claim that it wasn't racially motivated, but it could be a hate crime. Could be, could well be a hate crime. The real question is, will the powers that be prosecute it as a hate crime? Like one of the reasons why they say that there's a lot more, a lot more hate crimes against African Americans than white people, maybe because they consider a crime against an African American to be a hate crime. But when the, when the victim is white, they don't consider it a hate crime anymore. It is possible, it is, it is remotely possible that when the situation is reversed that they just don't consider it a hate crime and so the whole bunch of hate crimes just get counted as not being hate crimes. It is possible. but. In this case, it was a five-year-old little boy. Five-year-old little boy. I'm sure this man is going to plead insanity. I'm sure he is. Because uh, how else could he get away with it unless he pleaded insanity? Um, he's being charged with first-degree murder. And just so you know, um, Darian Sesums is a convicted felon so he does have a history of crime and um, the father apparently didn't know or didn't care that this man living across the street from him was a convicted felon um, but he held his son until the, until his son was dead and uh, son his son died at the hospital and uh, just five-year-old little boy shot point blank in the head by a 25-year-old man. So it could have been a hate crime. And what's what's interesting is that this happened Sunday afternoon. So Monday went by. First Sunday went by. The rest of Sunday. Then Monday went by. Then Tuesday went by. Then Wednesday went by. Then Thursday went by, and on Thursday, 
CNN reported on it. There was a media blackout on this hate crime. And um, people were mad. People were angry. They were so angry at CNN, at Vox, at all of these liberal media outlets because there was a media blackout on this horrendous hate crime which should have made the news. Why? Because the victim was white and the perpetrator was black and they think that it was, you know, bias, bias on the part of the, of the media that they didn't want to report this because it was incriminating. It was incriminating. It was embarrassing. And they didn't want anything incriminating or embarrassing to be published. So, um, just so you know, um, I'm not, not making any, any, uh, you know, statements against black people. Uh, just saying that this is horrendous and it's tremendously unfair. Now, um, check out the description. I know you, uh, that my last video seemed wild and implausible to you and it seemed like a conspiracy theory and you were like, there's no way that any of this is true. So I came up with some links, came up with some links to, to prove to you that indeed both sides, both the left and the right, both the left and the right are claiming that if you don't vote for their candidate and you vote for the other person's candidate, you're going to die. So I came up with some links to prove this. And indeed, both sides are claiming that you could die if you don't vote for their candidate. Now, um, it sounds outlandish. It sounds far out there. But it's some major media outlets like Salon and New York Post and they're all there and and Trump himself Trump himself of course they're all reporting they're all reporting um, that uh, there could be like what are the different ways you could die there could be riots things will get really bad there will be civil war those are all things that Trump said on the other side, they're saying that capitalism kills, um, that they're going to kill the, the, um, the eaters, the people who are, that are the, just the dead weight to society, that they're dead weight, and that they're going to kill the, the eaters, and they're going to, they're going to, um, Claiming there it's an anti-capitalist uh, rant. So there, so there's stuff on both sides. There are people on both sides, and the the guy at the Adams, the guy who writes Dilbert. He says that if you vote for Biden, and you are a cons conservative, you will be hunted down, and you'll all be dead within a year crazy crazy stuff crazy stuff on both sides on both the left and the right the right seems to be a little more extreme than the left but uh there's certain elements on the left that are no less extreme so there's a lot a lot a lot of fear mongering and of course biden said that he thinks trump is going to steal the vote and it could be true it could be true um Trump is shutting, has shut down the post office. The postmaster general that he appointed has shut down the post office in Portland, Oregon. Shut it down. Um, they're taking away mail sorting machines from several post offices. They're just taking them away, taking away the mail sorting machines so that there's no way that they can sort the mail or get your ma the mail to, to its destination anymore without these mail sorting machines because there's just too many people and not enough workers. They're taking away 
the mail sorting machines and they're shutting down post offices in Portland. The very next thing that's going to happen, and by the way, that's where the riots were, were in Portland, and it was crazy. It was totally crazy in Portland. Um, next thing that's going to happen is that uh, he's not going to allow mail-in voting at all. So people take their, their pick. They can either die of coronavirus at the polls, they can catch coronavirus at the polls and die, or else their vote won't be counted because it's a mail-in ballot and it just won't be counted because he's eliminating the post office. And he said, he admitted it. He admitted publicly that he's shutting down the post office and uh, that he's going to meddle in the election, that he's going to meddle. He's going to uh, prevent himself from being voted out of office. So these are all important things to consider. Another thing to consider is that uh, coronavirus, I figured this out myself, so it's no, based on statistics, it's not, not anyone else saying this. It comes from me. Coronavirus is 43 times more deadly than the flu. 43 times. Now that may not seem like a lot, like the number 43 may seem kind of low to you, but this is time. So it's multiply, 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 multiply. If you've ever had the flu ever in your life and you know how bad it was and you know how awful you felt and you know how it just took the wind out of your sails and you could barely drag yourself to the doctor to get Tammy flu and it was just the most awful experience of your life. Just imagine, just, just think about this, 43 times more lethal than that disease that you had. And um, how many people might die? Well, based upon the, ra the rates of death and the fact that everyone in America should be infected within a year and a month from now, so you can figure out real quick in your head, September 15th of 2021. By then, everyone in America will have caught it and there will be 22 million dead possibly. It could be up to 22 million dead or one in 15 Americans. That's just America, that's not around the world. So, one in 15 people will be dead. You will definitely know someone who died. You will definitely know someone who died. There'll be famous actors dead. There'll be uh, celebrities dead. There, there'll be people in your city dead. Uh, there'll be a lot of older generation dead. A lot of famous people dead. Uh, writers dead. Even the president could die. There's a lot of people. So, um, and the, the president isn't wearing a mask, He's saying coronavirus will be over any time now. Uh, the people aren't wearing masks and things are under control in Georgia, which is a lie, bold-faced lie. Things are not under control in Georgia. Um, yeah, uh, he's he's just been saying over and over and over that it's a hoax, the coronavirus is a hoax, that it's going away tomorrow, that it's going away soon, uh, that he's got a vaccine prepared, that uh, that hydroquinone stuff would work. He's just been making crazy, crazy statements every single day and he flip flops back and forth it's going to be really really bad and that he says it's going away soon and that he goes back and says it's going to be really bad um mixed messages so here's what i recommend i recommend that you protect yourself and your family just protect. Just go into defensive mode. Don't go on the offensive. You know what going on the offensive means. Don't go on the offensive. Uh, go on the defensive. 
just protect yourself and your family. Now, because of coronavirus, the president has this whole entire nation on lockdown. He, you can't get in of the, into the United States. Even if you're a U.S. citizen, he's going to strand you abroad. And you can't get out of the United States. You can't go anywhere. And all the countries in the whole world have, have locked their borders and aren't allowing people in and out of their countries. So there's nowhere you can go now. You're trapped. The noose is around your neck. You're trapped in the United States. You're trapped basically in a death trap. And you have to decide where to take yourself and your family the safest. So right now the coronavirus is everywhere and it's multiplying every single day. Um, there's really nowhere you can run or hide from the coronavirus. Um, as far as war between India and China, um, what could happen, what's possible, what's possible, I'm not saying it could happen, what's possible is that the United States could ally itself with India and protect and defend India, in which case China will also attack us. And Russia could ally itself with China, in which case Russia and, Ch and U.S. would declare war on each other. And then it's all over, folks. Uh, global nuclear war. Now there's this, this guy in India. I think, I think the initials of his, his uh, page are RTI. I think it's RTI, but... He, there's this Indian guy, and uh, he's claiming that Putin is the ally of India. Uh, recently, Putin sent a bunch of fighter jets to India, which made India feel safe and made them trust Russia. They feel very safe, and they feel like Russia will protect them, and that Russia's their ally, and that they'll take their side against China. And supposedly, Russia is not... Russia is no longer a communist country. Think about this. Uh, Putin is a communist sympathizer. He said that the fall of communism was a disaster. It was the worst thing that ever happened to his country. Um, he's, he's sent out feelers, tentacles, towards Xi Jinping before um, to see if he could ally himself with China. Um, and uh, he's a former KGB agent, so he's like a super spy. He thinks like a spy. So Putin cannot necessarily be trusted. Can't. Can, can't necessarily be trusted. What is China doing? Uh, China has ramped up uh, everything. Everything. Uh, they want to take over Taiwan. They've already taken over Hong Kong and they've already cracked down on Hong Kong and have new laws. Uh, that it's the U Uyghurs who are, there's one million of them that have died and the rest of them are being oppressed. They're being brainwashed and they're basically in prison just for being Uyghurs. They said that the reasoning was that they were being, the Uyghurs were being, um, arrested before they committed a crime. In other words, they weren't going to wait for them to get commit a crime. They were going to be proactive and arrest them before they had committed a crime because they thought it was very likely that they would commit a crime. So their only crime was that the state suspected them that they might become criminals. And so, um, and of course, they've devastated Tibet, committed genocide there in Tibet. And now they've invaded India, and they're on the border of India. It, both, both countries have massed their armies along the border. They have uh, fighter jets flying overhead. Um, just a very, very tense situation. Both countries are nuclear armed, both India and China. So there could be nuclear war, and even if Russia and U.S. agree with each other to stay out of it. 
even if they agree, which is very unlikely. It's very unlikely they would stay out of it. But if they did stay out of it, there would be something called nuclear winter. And it's the opposite of what the environmentalists said is going to happen. Um, there would be a global temperature drop. It would be um, poor sunlight, very, very dark because of the particulate matter in the in the air. Sun wouldn't be able to reach the earth. There would be crop failures. There would be a shorter growing season. So you wouldn't have weather, hot weather loving crops like corn, tomatoes, potatoes, food, food stuffs with a long growing season. Take a long time to grow. Um, short, short season crops would be in more demand. Um, you know, varieties, varietals that have a shorter growing season would be more in demand. Um, there'd be crop failures, there'd be hunger worldwide, famines, people starving to death. Um, dollar would be devalued, so um, you won't be able to buy anything, any food for your family anyway, because you can't get the money. And um, would be very, very cold winters, like where where it where you see temperatures of like fifteen below right now, fifteen below all winter, or maybe at its coldest, at the very coldest, thirty five below or thirty eight below. It'll go down to fifty below or sixty below in the winter time. There's no heater that'll keep keep up with it. You'll die if you're in the north. So what I recommend is that you move as far south now as you possibly can. Now's the time to move. Move south. As far south as they'll allow you to go in the U.S. You can't leave the country. Um, they've built a border wall to keep you in. It's not to keep the Mexicans out. It's to keep you in. Um border wall all along the Mexican border to keep you in so you can't get away. Um, yeah, and it'll be che checkpoints guarded, not people keeping Mexicans out, but people firing at Americans to keep them from getting to Mexico, keep them from escaping. Just go as close to the border as you can. Just get down to the border and um, get yourself some land if you, if you can afford it. Get yourself some land now. Make sure that there's a good water source, there's water supply nearby. Um, water is so important. Make sure it's a place without forest fires. If there's a lot of forest fires in your area, chances are good that it's going to be a firestorm when there's if there's nuclear war, um, there'll be fires everywhere. So go someplace where there aren't a lot of fires. If you ever look at the, the Western United States, whole Western United States, it's just one ball, big ball of flames. So uh, stick to central and Eastern states. Look in your, look, get yourself a map, get yourself a, a fire, wildfire map, a wildfire map of the U.S. It's easy. You can get it on, on Google. Wire, wildfire map of the U.S. It'll show you the areas and the counties. Show you by county which, uh, which areas have the most fires. So you can stay away from those areas because there will be fires. There will be lots and lots of fires if there's nuclear war. Um, even if it's restricted to China and India. And now it's too late to go to India. Like, if you ever wanted to visit India, it's too late. Um, or China. It's going to be... It's going to be... Um, even if the U.S. is never touched, which is very unlikely, but it, even if they were never touched, even once, um, it's going to be crop failures only place where 
it's less likely for there to be crop failures as down south, as far south as you can get. The farther south you get, the longer the growing season will be and the warmer it'll be and the, and, uh, the more sunlight there will be. So just get south, as far south as you can go. Um, get yourself some land so you can grow your own food. And another thing you can do, and I, I apologize, I apologize for taking an anti-gun stance. I do apologize. I realize now that considering the circumstances that we are in, it's just an extraordinary time to be alive. It's an extraordinary time to be alive. The media is provoking hate every single day. Every single day they're, they're provoking hate on both sides. On both sides, they're pitting people against each other. They're promoting racial hatred. Um, get yourself a gun. Doesn't have to be a big gun. Just get yourself like a handgun, something small, something you can carry with you, keep with you in your home. Just a gun, make sure it's concealed. Um, really won't be able to, uh, shop anywhere that because you don't want to leave the gun in your car because that it could get stolen um you don't want to shop anywhere it's got metal detectors um if if you do shop somewhere with a metal detector be sure to leave right away if they ask you to leave but you don't want to be without a gun now because it's just getting really really dangerous um, just for self-defense. Don't shoot anyone. Don't shoot anyone. Just carry it with you just in case you need it. And, um, you don't have to shoot if a person is unarmed. Like, for example, all you have to do is just whip it out and say, and yell for the person to get away from you and you can scare them off. Learn to use it. Learn to use this gun. You can actually, uh, even if someone is aiming a gun right at you, you can distract them. You can drop a wallet on the ground. You can say, oh, hi there. So glad you got here. Hi there, uh, Tom. Oh, hi, Tom. Thanks. Uh, I, I, it's such a relief you're here. The person turns around. Bang. Learn to use the gun. Learn to use it, learn to aim, learn to fire. Just practice every day. Um, the reason is that guns are not going away anytime soon. Just isn't uh, Second Amendment, it's enshrined in our Constitution. No one's going to pass an amendment to eliminate guns. No one is going to do that, not in the foreseeable future. I mean, even liberals support gun rights. Um, look at Bernie Sanders. He was pro-gun. So um, the balance of power is toward guns. To amend the Constitution takes like a, I think it's it's either two-thirds or three-quarters. I think it's a three-quarters vote. It's got to be a 75% majority or better. So it's very unlikely that guns are going to be rounded up and taken away. Everyone has one. Everyone has one. Criminals have them. Insane people have them. Gun nuts have them. Mass shooters have them. Everyone's got a gun. Uh, you really, you really need a gun to defend yourself, to protect yourself and others. If you're armed, um, you could save your life. You could save the life of a child. You may be your own child, maybe a loved one. And you could save, could save a whole crowd of people from a mass, from a, from a violent, uh, active shooter. So, um, at this point, my recommendation is get a gun. 
just a handgun that you can conceal. Get yourself a holster. Uh, get yourself a few clips. I know that they prefer to call them magazines. Maybe some of you know it as a magazine. Others prefer to it as a clip. Get yourself a few clips for your gun. And uh, stockpile some bullets. Because you're going to need bullets to practice, of course. I mean, it takes bullets to practice. So uh, get yourself some bullets to practice. Make sure that the, the bullets are appropriate for your gun. Try them out. Learn to use your gun. I hate, I hate guns. I really hate guns and I hate killing people. But um, it's a matter of life and death. It's come, become to the point where it's just a matter of, of pure survival. If the dollar was devalued, if the dollar crashed, if people were starving because of crop failures, people will kill you for food carrying food home from the grocery store, someone comes up with a gun and says, give me that. Um, and in a situation like that, having food is a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death to have that food. It's the difference between you starving or the other person with the gun starving. So... While I don't necessarily normally ask you to protect your property with lethal force, in the case of food and water in an emergency, it may be justified because you'll still die. You'll still die without the food and the water. So it, it really is a matter of life and death. And it'll be, there'll be, uh, social chaos police may not be able to help you um they'll be too busy there'll be crime everywhere there'll be fires everywhere you may not be able to stay in your home uh, your home could be set on fire please move out of the city uh, cities are targets even suburbs could be targets just move out to the country as far as you can or to a small town. Small towns are good. Because those aren't generally targets. There's just too many small towns to hit. So uh, move to a small town. Uh, move as far away from targets as you can. Just get away. Um, be prepared to take to the hills. In case, um, in case there's social chaos. You can hide in the woods. Get some books on survival. Um, just look, search for survival books. Get yourself some books. Read all you can. Um, people who are who are preparing call themselves preppers. Uh, just so you know, um, they used to be called survivalists back in the eighties, but now they call themselves preppers because uh, survivalist and survivalism has taken on negative connotations it's considered a negative like doomsday people but it could really could happen um like what is china doing in the south china sea they've been building a series of islands manning them with planes with there's been a military buildup of planes of ships they're building artificial islands they're massing up the sandbars to create these islands they're bioforming and then they then they are terraforming that's what it's called terraforming and then setting up these islands with military bases in the south china sea so they're preparing for war um russia they said there would be an august surprise russia's taking over the north pole it's just it's a land grab he's claiming it for himself now, what you don't know is that the easiest way to send a missile to the United States is over the poles. They don't send them around the world or around the circumference of the world around the equator. They don't do that. Send the missiles over the poles. Hit their targets. So...
also um, because it's a lot shorter distance over the poles. The fact that he's taking the pole, claiming the poles could be mean he's planning on setting up some silos there with some nuclear weapons pointed at the U.S. They're both gearing up for war, both countries. And it would be a surprise attack if, if they're plotting against America. It would be a surprise attack. They wouldn't tell us, they wouldn't advertise it. And the fact that the media has a total blackout um, for several months. Fox didn't report on it. CBS, ABC, NBC, the big four networks did not report on the China-India conflict at all, except a couple of times when it first started, and then they didn't talk about it ever again. It's been in the Hindustan times, it's been all over the all over the place in India and China, but in America they're not telling you what's going on. They don't want you to know. They don't want to scare you. They don't want you to prep. They don't want you to prepare. But um, the government wants you to prepare and the Red Cross wants you to prepare because they have websites dedicated to um, preparing for an emergency, for a disaster. You want as much food as possible, and it's got to be ready-made, something you can make without heat. So there are foods that you can prepare without heat. Um, some of them are ready-made foods, like the kind that come in a bucket. Just, you need scissors. you got to have scissors. Cut them open, pour them in a bowl, add water, mix, stir, and let it sit for about 20 or 30 minutes and you have a meal without food uh, there's no heat but you'll, you'll have a you'll have something edible in case of an emergency and um, you can also get canned foods which means you have to have a can opener if you're arthritic you won't be able to do that obviously arthritic people can't use a manual can opener so for those individuals it's better not to have canned goods uh just some just some ideas now you ask how much food for, should i should i store up well the real question is in the case of a nuclear war how long do you want to live do you want to live a month do you want to live two months you want to live three months? Do you want to live six months? Do you want to live a year? The more food you have stockpiled, the longer you'll live. Could be a long time that nuclear winter lasts a long time. Could last 10 years, up to 10 years. So stockpile what you can, just get what you can afford. Get, get yourself some food, water, water so essential to life. You can last three minutes without air, three minute, three days without water, and uh, three weeks without food. So air and water are incredibly important. Um, the only way you're going to lose air is if there's a nuke, if there's a, if there's a volcanic explosion and you're near a volcano and the ash falls. Or else if someone has you in a chokehold. So that's the other reason to get a gun. Because someone could have you in a chokehold and choke you to death. Or they could uh, do some damage to some internal organs with a gun. So there's some things people can do to kill you. So that's air. Uh, water is can't last three days without water. So you have to have water. Um, the recommendation is a gallon per person per day but the truth is that you could actually survive on half a gallon so just get as much water as you can um, long term that's not going to work if your municipal system shuts down and you don't have running water anymore or even if you have running water but they're not treating it like if 
if uh, mechanisms for treating water have broken down and the tap water is unsafe. Um, you'll need some chlorine tablets. That's what I recommend is chlorine tablets. Uh, chlorine tablets will kill everything, kill viruses, including norovirus, which causes fatal diarrhea, kills cysts, kills giardia, kills protozoa, kills all bacteria. Uh, that's why they use chlorine. I know it's nasty stuff, but in an emergency, it could save your life. So get some chlorine tablets. Another thing to keep in mind during a nuclear war. And you want to filter your water because there might be sediment or debris in your water. Um, get yourself like a nut milk bag. Strain your water. Um, get the debris out. Get the silt and the sand out. Um, and mud. So that. You'll need some buckets. you need something to stir to get the chlorine tablets dissolved, um, I recommend that you get a pitcher. Get the pitcher of your choice. Read about the pitchers. Read the pros and cons. Just get some of the heavy metals out. Won't take all the heavy metals. Uh, they don't guarantee, but it does take out some of the heavy metals. Like nuclear. If there's a nuclear war, there will be uranium in the water. Get yourself a pitcher to take out some of the chlorine that you added, some of the uranium, plutonium, whatever else, radium, anything else that's in the water. Um, pitcher will do a pretty good job of getting most of that out. You also want some iodine tablets. Look for iodine tablets um, online. Protect your thyroid from thyroid cancer. That kills faster than anything that's thyroid, can thyroid cancer. Um, you'll need some iodine tablets. And uh, the radiation lasts up to two weeks. Lasts up to two weeks after a nuclear disaster or attack. So two weeks should be safe to go outside again. But in a nuclear war, there could be a strike any time, right? So there could be a second attack and a third attack and a fourth attack. Smartest thing for you to do is to stay inside as long as you can in the most sheltered part of your house or apartment, like anywhere where there's no windows. And uh, I hope you don't live in a wood structure because those go on fire easily. Get into a brick structure if you can. Far away from the city, city center as you can. And as far south as you can go, where there will actually be some food. Um, president will have emergency powers, so he'll be able to declare a national emergency. And there will be some warning. There will be some warning. I want to show you something. Uh, get yourself one of these. See this? Get yourself one of these. This is a uh, Midland brand. Midland. If there's ever a nuclear attack, government should warn you. Won't necessarily warn you, but uh, it's better safe than sorry. Get yourself one of those. It's a NOAA weather radio, N-O-A-A, -A, weather radio. Tells you if there's a nuclear attack. You can turn off all the other alarms. It'll still wake you in the middle of the night if there's a tornado, which is great. Um, can't turn that alarm off. But um, to turn off the other alarms because it'll wake your neighbors. Um, unless you really want to be warned if there's a, fl a flash flood or a flood or a or a, a, a thunderstorm it'll tell you it'll keep warning you every 20 minutes every 20 minutes it'll it'll be a 90 decibel siren beeping so um get yourself one of those get yourself a hand crank radio 
Another thing I recommend is that you protect your electronics because uh, you won't be able, you won't have access to electronics after a nuclear war and there will be no trade with China. Um, get yourself an EMP bag, an EMP bag or like a box and wrap it in a double wrap it in aluminum foil and that will protect you that will protect you, your electronics just put if there's an emergency put all your electronics in the bag right away or into the box right away that you'll have as, and keep there's certain things you want to keep in the box all the time maybe a backup computer backup phone backup radio you also want to get yourself a transistor radio because those can survive uh, EMP attack. What is EMP? That's electromagnetic pulse. Um, so EMP bags protect your electronics in an emergency. Just get them put away as fast as you can. Uh, you want to protect your laptop want to protect your cell phone you uh you want to get surge protectors because there there will be surges everywhere um get yourself some really good surge protectors you want to look at the the clamping the clamping uh amperage the clamping amperage will be like an amps um Get yourself a, at the lowest number you can. You want it to clamp right away if there's a surge. You want to be protected. You want to protect LED lights. LED lights can get blown out. And there will be nowhere to buy replacement bulbs for the, your LEDs. Um, get yourself uh, like a good, a good, uh, a good flashlight is a mag light. Mag lights have these solid aluminum bodies that are resistant to EMPs. Um, put that in your box so you have a light. Uh, maybe get yourself some LED LED lanterns. Get some batteries. Get rechargeable batteries. Get get a something to charge them with a rechargeable battery charger and also you want um, solar panels that solar panels to power the battery charger it doesn't have to be something large it can be a small portable uh, solar panels to charge your batteries so those are all things you might need um, as far as being out on the road basic camping supplies um, you may have to travel if you're if you're living in the north and you can't go anywhere, you may have to travel down south if this happens. So you need camping gear. And uh, one of the most important things things you'll need, you'll need a compass, and you'll need binoculars. Um, get the far, the far distance binoculars, the ones that allow you to see uh, a mile away or more so you can read signs. You want to go, go around, around cities, small city, small city or a medium sized city, you want to make 20 mile radius around the city. So 20 miles in all directions, you want to go around the city. If it's a, if it's a large city, like the largest of cities, you want to go 50 miles around the city. So you want to draw a 50 mile radius around the city. Go around the city. It means walking through some fields. Walking through uh, rural areas. Taking some rural roads. Get yourself some good maps. Trace a route. Make a plan now. Roads will be damaged. You won't be able to drive. That's why it would be a good idea to move now if you can. But if you can't, um, Google will be down, so it'll be too late then to trace a route. 
get yourself some tick trips from triple uh, a triple a wherever you are in the country um, get yourself some tick trips showing tracing a route so you know which way to go and and uh, just follow the beside the highway if you can um, take some back roads you want to know um, where all the trails are for walkers because there's trails everywhere in the US um, there's trails for walkers and there's certain roads you can take Let's trace a trace a route for yourself um, figure out what roads you have to turn on to and um, it's a lot of work it's a lot of work preparing for this it's gonna cost a lot of money to survive um, those of you who are poor are going to be gonna be in for a really rough ride um, camp out for a while if you lose your home if you if your if your house is on fire and you have to leave um, if you have a car you can live out of your car for a while you can go to a campsite and go camping for a while but remember the campsites will be completely swamped be so many people at the campsites oh my gosh you won't have any room um, this conflict could go on a long long time it's already started and it's been going on for a month and a half now actually more than a month and a half it's been going on for a month and three quarter three weeks a month and three weeks so it's been going on a long time but uh, when when will when could not will but could when could China strike well you should know that it's going to be second half of, of October onward it's gonna be a red October there's gonna there could be an October surprise just so you know just keep in mind from October onward they they want to attack in the winter because there will be the most death and carnage um, people without heat people without shelter in the winter kill a lot of people um, kill a lot more people in the winter time because there'll be nowhere to go there'll be nowhere to go there'll be no shelter government may take care of you may not take care of you it's be expected to shelter in place for a while then you'll have to go outside and face the crowds be crowds just grabbing things people grabbing things around every street corner um, might go against your go against your beliefs to shoot into a crowd people and you might be considered a mass shooter and then of course the crowd will feel justified in taking anything from you that they can including your gun and all of your equipment and your food anything they can grab so you want to stay indoors as long as you can because outside it's going to be mass chaos there'll be, be people who are armed grabbing anything they can just to survive um if there's a nuclear war uh i i think i think it would be a good idea for you to get as far away from the city as you can as fast as you can I know that they tell you to shelter in place and that there's still rate going to be radiation but it might be a good idea to get away as fast as you can because people are people are crazy and uh, if you live near there's a few there's like three targets in the United States where there could be a hole ripped in the earth's crust and there could be a lake of lava and there could be smoke for thousands of miles where are these places well one is in Wyoming near the near the border it's where three or four states join each other one is in Wyoming one is in the center of Montana one is in North Dakota they will drop 
thousands of bombs at once in these little areas. Well, they're not little areas. They're pretty big, but uh, little compared to the whole United States. And there could be holes in the Earth's crust. There could be smoke billowing. Covers thousands of miles. It's all going to be in the northern half of the United States. So you can draw a line. Western United States will be completely engulfed in flames. Especially California. California will be completely destroyed. There will be fires everywhere. And the northern half of the United States, there will be smoke everywhere where you can't even breathe. Um, at least the southeastern United States. Yeah. It's your friends, right? Your friends, the southerners. Um, make friends now because... Uh, that's the place where people will be most likely to survive. Do this. Look for political map of U.S. by county. Political map of U.S. by county. See where all the, the Dems live and the Republicans live. You'd be surprised. Your state could actually be a red state and you don't even know it. But it's considered a blue state there's just so many people living in the city. After a nuclear war, those people will be destroyed instantly. So who lives in the cities? The Dems live in the cities. The Republicans live in the country. So who will be left once there's a nuclear war? Well, all the Dems will be destroyed and only Republicans will be left. So uh, make friends now. Make friends now. Get over any prejudices you may have. Because you're going to spend a lot of time with Republicans. A lot. A lot of time. It's a shame that they're pitting people against each other. And encouraging these, these, uh, these killings of innocent children. Um, and other people, other than children dying. Five-year-old. I mean... Kills a five-year-old. A person like that has to be criminally insane. To kill a five-year-old. But it, w it, it was probably racially motivated. Uh, considering what, what's happened in this country. And the atmosphere in this country. It was probably a hate crime. It was probably racially motivated. Um, don't know what to tell you. Uh, just get as much food and water as you can. Get camping supplies, get yourself a backpack so you can pack out. Um, they call it a bug out bag. Just get yourself a big backpack, fill it up with water and food, something you can grab right away. Get yourself a compass, binoculars, means to start a fire. Make sure there's three ways to start a fire. You want a flint or whatever they consider a flint. Uh, you want matches you want a lighter and maybe get yourself an extra long lighter like the kind that you use to light a barbecue get yourself an extra long lighter so um you can start a fire without without burning yourself and um fire will be essential if you're out in the wilderness to survive uh fire will keep you alive in the winter there, there are people who used to deliver mail in the winter in Alaska and there was snow, it was a blizzard. They were outside all the time. How did they stay alive? Stayed alive by bundling up a lot and uh, fire. Now I have a confession to make. Um, uh, a vegan diet has ruined my health. I, I actually have more allergies now than I ever did at any other time in my life. One allergy after another, after another. And then when coronavirus happened and I was washing my hands and staying indoors all the time, um, my allergies exploded. I've got like 15 new allergies. I'm allergic to like Six over 60 food stuffs now. There's barely anything left that I can eat. 
Um, it's very hard to maintain a vegan diet when there's nothing you can eat. So, um, I, 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 I thought to myself, maybe this happened because I became a vegan. Because I never had so many allergies in my life before I became a vegan. That's the only thing I did differently. This has happened to some other people too. It's kind of rare. Like most people have some allergy relief when they become vegans. But it hasn't been so for me. It hasn't been so for me. So um, I have added some dairy back to my diet. And if there, if there is ever a war, you will have to eat anything that is offered to you. Anything. Unless it's allergenic. You have to eat anything that's offered to you. You even have to maybe even eat shoe leather. So just eat whatever you get. I don't care if it's tuna fish and it's got mercury in it. I don't care if it's uh, beef, or chicken. You just have to eat whatever you're offered. And the government may come by with a box for you with tuna, with chicken, with beef, and also some vegetables and some pasta, maybe some pasta and some in a box of cereal and some powdered milk. You'll just have to eat whatever's offered to you, whatever's given so you can survive. As if that's in the event of a war. And I just have another announcement I would like to make. Um, I am canceling the Harvest Moon Festival this year. I am canceling the Harvest Moon Festival. Why would I do this? Why would I cancel Harvest Moon Festival? Well, because of coronavirus. Um, this is not a time to be celebrating. This is an unprecedented event. If you still want to have a uh, vegan Thanksgiving with your family, you can. Um, but remember that you could that your kids are going to go back to school. They're being forced to go back to school by by Trump. I recommend homeschooling your children. Just become a homeschooler. Educate, educate your children at home if you can. And there's lots of homeschooling resources online. Just get those resources while you can. But um, don't send your kids to school. But if you do send your kids to school, if you feel personally that they would benefit from a public education, which they really won't, but if you feel they'll benefit from it, um, then then uh, be sure that you social distance, you teach your kids to wear masks, that you wear a mask at home. And um, just uh, just just get some just get some masks. Uh, right now, the elite have reserved masks for their own personal use. The N95 is the best mask, and you can't get one. You can't get one. You can't get an N95. It's uh, for paramedics, firefighters, and police only. The privileged, the elite in our society uh, are workers and also also uh, government guys get these N95 masks. It's reserved for wor uh, the, the, wor uh, the uh, emergency workers and the elite and also doctors and nurses. So if you're not one of those, uh, the next best thing is KN95, which comes from China. And I know a lot of you are like, well, I don't want anything from China. But it could save your life. Make sure it's got a nose piece. Folds around your nose. Piece of metal. Folds around your nose. Be sure in the description that the mask has a nose piece that folds around your nose. Get yourself a KN95 mask. To keep it nice so you can reuse it again 
uh, get yourself a cloth mask and hook it over KN95 mask because I'll tell you what, uh, coronavirus is very deadly. And those who aren't killed by it right away are going to have heart attacks within a year or two. So I'll kill them anyway, and the coroner will say, well, it was a heart attack, but it was really coronavirus. Um, it does heart damage, does lung damage, does kidney damage, does liver damage. It attacks your internal organs, and you could die very quickly of complications down the road. Like I've explained, a lot of people will need dialysis, and dialysis machines will not be available. People need them, and then people will die. Just make sure you don't catch it. I'm Sarah Jane Alpha Wolf signing off. Um, I know this was a very grave video. It was a lot to think about. Um, but protecting yourself and your family is the most important thing you could do. It's the most important thing you could do. Uh, protect yourself, protect your family, survive for the next generation. Survive so you can carry on the human race once everyone else is gone.